I'm a 3D artist, and in this video, I turned Minecraft mobs into overpowered boss versions and even got a real mod developer to rate my designs from 1 to 10. They turned out way better than I expected, so if you like what you see, I'd appreciate if you subscribe. I've designed a lot of Minecraft bosses in the last couple of years. Some of them have been pretty good, while others, even better. But in all that time, I've never been asked to make one for a company. At least I haven't until today. Now, which company in their right mind would ask me for a Minecraft boss? Hoyoverse. A AKA the creators of Genshin Impact. The first mob I wanted to redesign is the slime. This one's always been on my list, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. To start out, I'm gonna have to model a slime. I am now done modeling the slime. Genshin has slimes, right? Okay, we're gonna have to try a little harder than that. I'm in desperate need of inspiration right now, so I'm actually gonna try Genshin real quick. Okay, turns out that wasn't really quick, but now that my training is complete, here's my idea. In Genjin, there's these cube guys, uh, hypostasis, and they have one for every element. The fire element, the rock element, and now the slime element. I split the slime into eight parts, designed these cool runic patterns, and this is what I came up with. I'm gonna call it the mother slime or the slime king. It starts out as a normal slime, but then it rises ominously off the ground and splits into eight pieces. I even made some of them stick together like the slime is holding it there for a second. I am not an animator by any means, but this makes me feel like Walt Disney himself is guiding my hand, okay? Tell me that's not cool. It's guarding this diamond in the center, which takes damage if you hit it, but other than that, it doesn't really do much of anything right now, and that is not acceptable. So I gathered a team of researchers and started looking for more inspiration. Watch out for the slap. What slap? And at that moment, I had the perfect idea. These hypostasises, hy hypos hypostases, I don't know, I just got here. They all morph into different objects for their attacks. A boulder, a fist, tentacles, scissors, you name it. So what would a slime want to morph into? Well, I've got a couple options. Option one, I'm kidding, it's a hand. However, the hand does shoot slime balls out of its finger. It even does this animation where the slime is making its way through. It's pretty gross, but I had fun making it. That you're gonna hate this so much. Next option, the slimes assemble into a wall that crashes down onto the player, but there's holes in the wall so you can kind of position yourself into avoiding it. Also, when it hits the ground, it splits into 172 individual slimes. This is where you get the most damage in before they merge back together. Uh, additional options include a squid flop, a sword swing, a flick, just like a, you know. And finally, a tactical missile. How will they propel themselves into the sky, only to come crashing down and explode? The same way I wake up every morning. Reluctantly. Before I wrap this one up, I should let you know that Genshin just dropped a new update. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Check this out. These updates are massive, and it's free to play, so go check it out if you have the time, and feel free to use the link below. Thanks again, Shin, for sponsoring. Let's get back to the video. If I'm gonna impress the mod developer, I'm gonna need more than one boss. So the next mob I wanted to redesign is the Iron Golem. There's been plenty of mods that add more types of golems, but what I ended up making is degrees of magnitude better. For inspiration this time, I'm referencing the Ruin Guard from Genshin. It's got all these cool mechanical parts and overgrowth, and I think it's a good base for the golem upgrade. I started by making the main body shape. I added a lot of parts that could be gears or something else. Normally when I make a boss, it's made up of 10 to 20 cubes, but this time that's simply not going to cut it. I kept adding part after part, springy arms, exhaust pipes, only to realize I really did just directly copy the Ruin Guard. So to fix that, I employed my special technique of duplicating the arms. Now they don't even have the same limbs. Forget about it. In the end, there's about 140 cubes on this thing, about seven times the usual count and two or three times the price of eggs. I also included a few planes I can use used for vines and trees. After I cleaned it up a bit, this golem is ready for textures. I usually pick actual Minecraft blocks to use, so for this one, I set up a palette of stripped spruce wood, copper, moss, and blackstone. Basically the same blocks I used for that grappling hook I made a while back. I'm going for a steampunk look, so I added a lot of decorative fittings and patterns. For the face, I guess this is basically Wheatley from Portal 2. Love that guy. It took me several hours, but little by little, it was starting to look like one of my best models yet. Comparing this model to the other golems on the market, I was feeling pretty confident. But if I was going to impress the mod developer and the company whose design I blatantly copied, I'm going to need something unique to really knock this out of the park. I didn't want to resort to this, but I'm going to have to try something I despise with all of my being. Animation. Animation really grinds my gears. 
But I decided to bite the bullet and really take one for the team here. The team, of course, is just me. I'm losing my mind. Walk cycles are comprised of contact poses and passing poses, both of which move up and down. These four poses apply to everything from humans to whatever this is, and Blender automatically fills in the rest. But while eventually I got the basic cycle down, something just looked off. For a model with so many parts, it was more rigid and awkward than I was in middle school. On top of the basic cycle, I made the vines swing around in the wind and made the arms actually bend like they should. I even added compression to it so they bounce around like a slinky or something. I was really proud of this, but I wasn't quite done yet. These exhaust pipes currently don't do anything, so to fix that, I added a particle system with turbulence fields and linked it to a collection of smoke objects, and now... Oh, come on. Now it's finally ready. I made a few little changes like a head bounce and mechanical things, but for the most part, I think I'm finally ready for this to be done. I love how this turned out, and even though it's still an obvious copy, at least it's cool enough to make up for it. With that, I was finally out of time because the day had arrived for the mod developer to judge my work. What do you know about Genshin Impact? Is that the- oh. I like that. That's clever. That's like, uh, it's more interesting than just like the slime jumps at you. All the animations you made are really smooth. It makes them feel way more natural. The wall falling really reminds me of Bookworm from Mario Party 4, which I spent a long time playing. Something that detracts a little bit from it is actually the technological aspect to this. Lean either harder into the technological aspect or lean less into it. I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10. The art style is a little mm, disassociated. I think maybe if the slime changed colors during the attacks or maybe different colors for different phases, that would be useful. Just throwing out ideas. Okay, well, first of all, the forearms is awesome. I love anything that has forearms. The smoke is super satisfying to watch. I mean, in general, everything about this model and the animations is just really satisfying. The way the arms stretch and squash is nice. I mean, I'm just staring at it just in awe. Oh, I didn't even notice that the torso is bouncing and it has like a little jiggle on it. The fact that it has the mossy look to it matches with the copper style. Feels like this thing's been sitting under a tree for like a hundred years or something. For things that I don't like, things that could be improved. I think, as always, this is quite a big boss, and so that means in Minecraft it's going to be a little janky. So the player would come up to, like, the hip-ish. Maybe, like, here. That actually seems to fit pretty well. All right, well, I rescind that complaint, and I'm going to have to give you another half a point on the score for a total of 8.5 <laughs> out of 10. It's almost a shame that you have to fight it. I just want to make, like, a 100 bosses like this, or just mobs <laughs> that are, like, super detailed and have, like, cool... Sounds animations. like you want to just be, like, a modeler for games. With that, I had successfully impress the mod developer once again and Genshin loved the designs even though this thing this is an abomination. Anyways, Genshin just launched their annual Lantern Ride event. Go check it out today for tons of free stuff, including a character of your choice. As a 3D artist, my favorite part about this game is the environments. They put a lot of work into this, so if you haven't tried Genshin yet, get on down to the link below and start playing today. In the meantime, I'm not giving up until it's 10 out of 10s every single time. See ya.